Welcome. I'm J. Michael Silver, and this is Foundational Steps, the show. I talk with people about the choices they make and how they get where they are in life. In this episode, I'm talking with Brandon Croucher. He's a former youth minister, entrepreneur, podcaster, fire spinner, and all around great guy. Brandon and I have a wide ranging conversation. And if you want to know how he went from taking 15 different pills for anxiety and depression to taking none, stay tuned. Links to Brandon are in the show notes, along with timestamps for things that came up in our conversation. I'd love to hear your thoughts, so leave a comment or a review. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. To go deeper or ask questions, find us on patreon.com forward slash foundational steps. Enjoy the conversation. Brandon, welcome. (laughs) <laughs> it's good. Thanks, Michael. Again. Um, yeah. So the last time I saw you was uh, you had me as a guest on your daily show. And yes, sir. Your daily show is, is Java Delight, right? Correct. And you started that. See, I was kind of impressed because I, not kind of, I was straight up impressed because you, you do that every single day or, or what's. Uh, I did. And uh, my, I have other companies I work with as well that I work, I own. And I was doing that during COVID as a way to help people find inspiration and like, just find a positive because we were all stuck at home and we're all stuck doing these video chats. At least let's do something together and make it a better day, you know? And as the year went on, like 2021, I was already doing five shows a day with that and other interviews for other shows, I started to get burned out. And I went out on air one day and I just said, look, my other companies are hurting and I needed to take a break. I'm going to come back in February of 2022. So I go back that that 2 2222 is when I come back. And I chose that because you have to get yourself aligned before you can go do so much for so many others. Oh yeah. And if I'm going to be on air that much, I need to have a plan, not just have, and the team that's doing what we need. So for me, it was a learning lesson, but it was, I knew I was headed in the right direction. And when we come back, it's going to be twice as strong now. So you're going to go back to doing every day though. Uh, so we're going to do three days a week. I'm going to do three Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Okay. And I have an associate who is going to do veterans podcasts mm-hmm. and he is actually worked for the veterans association and all that. And he's going to help vets through communication, through teachings, help them be able to get the benefits they deserve that they might not know they deserve in yeah. an open forum. And cool. cause a lot of benefit, a lot of vets are just hurting and they don't, they don't feel they have a person there that's on their team. And he, that was his job is to be that person for so long. He wants to show people how to do it on the internet. I am so sorry. This cat is not going to leave us alone. This whole time. That's fine. You know, (laughs) I thought she was going to fall right asleep. Yeah. I mean, who knows? Um, I have no idea what, uh, what kind of audience I'm going to have at this point in time, you know, since this is just the beginning of, of this endeavor. So maybe I'll have oh, some yeah. absolute cat lovers and, and they're just be like, Oh my God, that's so great. <laughs> oh, then I'm going to have to get the other, her sister too. Cause their names are what makes them amazing. So for you, if you get cat lovers, I got you. That's awesome. What's the, this one's is cat, uh, Cleo, Cleocatra. Yep, this is Cleocatra um, because her sister is all black with uh-huh. a white tip on her tail. That's all the chain she has. Wow. And it's really cute. Well, she has two faces, and I couldn't find any good female empowerments with two faces like you do in comic books, like for men. Yeah. So I was looking around and I wanted this one to have a powerful name and that one to have a powerful name. So she got Cleocatra. And the other one got Nyx, N-Y-X. Do you know what Nyx, who Nyx is? The first thing that comes to mind is there's a movie from either the early aughts or maybe the 90s um, from, um, God, what was the name of the movie? It was, it was a short story based off of um, the guy who wrote Cabal. And, um, oh my God, I'm just blanking. He wrote Hell. He wrote the Hellraiser movie series. He's written so many amazing books. Clive Barker. So uh, he his nem one of the I guess the it was actually kind of a, a bad character, 
um, in the in this in the short story and the movie, but his name was Nix and he was a magician. Um, and Nix was named after someone else, and I don't remember the lore. Clive Barker's really good at taking you know real life uh, or history and kind of weaving it into some of his stories and and a lot of arcane you know occult kind of knowledge. So I'm guessing Nix is somewhere along those lines. You're actually. No, it's a Greek goddess. <laughs> so uh, Nyx is actually the only goddess that Zeus feared of all the god and goddesses. Hmm. She was the goddess of darkness. She was the goddess of anger and depression. Well, that, that tracks with she, Clive Barker's usage. That oh, see, I knew you. I knew you'd see it. Except it. Except now the casting. I don't remember the short story because it's been so long. The movie I've seen a ton of times because it was Scott Bakula and maybe a few other faces you'd recognize. But it's one of those like um, the main character Swan is kind of like a David Copperfield, except his illusions aren't illusions; they're actual magic, and he just pretends to be an illusionist and uh scott bacula's character plays a uh you know a detective a very noirish and he's tracking and he has a specialty in the occult and he tracks like this stuff and what movie is this again oh god what is the name hold on let me look i it, it's a it's a clive barker um it's a clive barker film uh, Clive based Parker. short story. Do you know his? Do you know his movie Nightbreed? 80s? No. Nightbreed is uh Nightbreed is epic. So, Clive Barker. Um, let me see how to look this up. I got it right here. Clive Barker Wikipedia. Yeah. But I want his. We don't want his Wikipedia. We want his photography. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, IMBD. IMDb. That's right. uh, so. That's where I'm at now. So Hellraiser is being remade. Uh, I know that movie. That sounds that I've seen. I think Hellraiser. I, so I I'm not a movie guy. I, I hate to say this. People hate this about me. They tell me to watch something or a movie I should know because it's a pop culture thing, and I'm like I never know them. And people are like like I didn't see Goonies till I was in my mid twenties. Well, and I. That's a little bit of a travesty. <laughs> but I love the movie now. Like, I could watch yeah. it, like, as many times. But, like, I don't know what it was. It was something about movies growing up. I just, it, it might, I, we didn't go to the movies as a young kid, and I was energetic. So if the commercials came on the TV, like Star Wars, I could never get through an entire Star Wars because I hated commercials. And wow. I just couldn't finish it. And I, 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 my ADHD is too much for it. So that's why it's funny I, I to me. That. Like, I'm like, yeah. So Hellraiser, Hell, so Hellbound. The, yeah, those Hellraiser. Well, Lord of Illusions is the movie that I was talking about. 1995, it came out. Okay. And, um, and you know, I don't know. I'm, I, I'm sure I can make this relevant to to foundational steps and, and our conversation. <laughs> yeah. uh, We'll bring it back to it if you want. That way I can give you time to think. Do you want to ask me a different question? Well, no. So <laughs> I got it. Here's how it is. So, I mean, in the movie, like the Nix is the cult leader. So Nix is literally kind of the arbiter of like death and destruction and darkness and, and you know, opening your mind. So what he was a cult leader in the movie. And um, Indigo or Swan, I can't remember, maybe not Indigo, but Swan was his main disciple and Swan imprisoned him and basically, you know, made him, you know, undead. You know, he was in a uh, in like a, a, a chamber underground or something like that with bondages on his face and mouth so he couldn't speak. It, it's pretty dark. It's pretty wild. Um, and but Nix taught Swan the foundations of magic and the foundations are essentially know yourself, know what you are. So that's how it would translate mm. the foundational steps because, you know, know thyself is probably the most powerful saying in history, you know, and yeah. now the twist is Nix shows you your, your darkest side. So Correct. you're, you're familiar with shadow work. 
Absolutely. Yes, sir. Okay. I actually just had a meeting about it yesterday oh, that's and fine. I have a hypnotherapy session right after this today. Oh, nice. Okay. What time is that? <laughs> so, like, so how much time? Oh, 2.30. My okay. time, 2.30. So two hours. Okay. So we got, we got time. Um, oh, yeah. So, you know, shadow work, obviously for anyone that might be listening that doesn't know, Carl Jung, uh, the great psychologist, disciple of Freud, who really kind of took over, you know, the mental aspects. Uh, I'm explaining for anyone that might not know this. I know you know this, but you're good. Um, you know, he came up, he coined the term shadow work as a way of dealing with the, our, 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 our shadow, our dark side, our, what we're scared of, what we're fearful of, you know, and, you know, it can get esoteric sometimes the way I talk about it, because I imagine like this soulful light, like this God energy or, um, you know, this brilliance of just pure love and joy. You know, that's the way I like to imagine God or, you know, universal energy and our crap, our, our baggage, our, you know, fear, the, the things that we get conditioned to second guess or hate about ourselves, our self-worth, you know, basically keep that light from coming in. And so, and, you know, when we have something that, you know, we fear or we're scared of, or we don't want to acknowledge, or we're trying to repress or hide that creates uh, a shadow because the God light is shining down, trying to shed light on it. You're trying to ignore it. And so in trying to ignore it or trying not to deal with it, all you see is the shadow being cast. And that yeah. shadow is demons and uh, darkness and the horrible things that, you know, are in like hell, Hellraiser, Lords of Illusion. So that's the way I look oh, at it. Right? Way to pull that back in there. Well done. I, I think you just explained that in a, in a very, very profound way, if you think about it, because like a lot of people try to explain shadow work. And like, I, the reason I had a meeting is I have a guy who does shadow work and he's a therapist and all this. And we were getting into the conversation about how when he tries to explain it to people, it can go over people's head. They don't understand. Like you have to be willing to understand certain things that a lot of people already like they label as silly crazy weird you have to be willing to let go of your the biggest thing i tell people is let go of your ego to be really yeah. truly understanding and you explained it with the shadow and the shadow work and what was interesting is i pictured in my head as you're explaining it the light and then the shadow behind it and your shadow is usually behind white it's not in front of you, it's where the light is, you know, imagine ourselves being able to realize, don't look back, don't look ahead, focus on where you are, don't let the shadow dictate where you're going. Yeah. And that's like, I, you just, you made me think through it in a different way. And I loved that. I could picture it in a different way. Well, so depression is oftentimes associated with living in the past because you're trying, you like, yes. you're lamenting what you can't change and what's happened. Right. So if you're lamenting what's in the past and the light is shining on you and your shadow is behind you, then all you're doing is looking at your shadow. Correct. And if you're, you know, in our creative minds, like this, so I try to take esoteric things and make them mathematical or scientific. So, mm -hmm. you know, anytime I'm working with someone or talking to someone or, you know, talking to myself, um, like one of the things that I love going back to uh, is spatial dimensions. Mm -hmm. So one dimension, you know, or the singularity is like where there is no space. We are all one. Everything is unified because, you know, it, it's encapsulated in one point, you know, mm -hmm. so that's no dimensions. So then one dimension is a line. And so you've got left or right, up or down, you know, backwards, forward. And that's one dimension. It's duality. So duality comes from one dimension. And like, you know, a lot of people talk about nowadays, you know, there's a movement in the kind of the metaphysical spiritual, you know, talking about non-dualism, which, you know, comes out of Buddhism and non-dualism is really acknowledging either more than one dimension 
or or less than one dimension, just space, you know, a singular point, right? So as soon as you have two dimensions and you have a plane, right? So, and a plane would pass right through one dimension on a single point. And, and that, you know, two dimensions that left or right, uh, positive, negative, up or down is not going to see the rest of that surface. It's just going to get that one point. And then three dimension is infinite number of planes. So infinite numbers of side to side, backwards, forwards, up or down. So that would be three dimensions, which is infinite two dimensions and infinite, you know, one dimensions. So you've got infinite duality and it creates, you know, for, if you think of like platonic solids, it creates, uh, and you think of the infiniteness of it. If you're trying to look at everything, it creates like a fractal, you know, math problem or like a, a box of mirrors or something like that, because everything is just kind of, you know, light reflects things. And so if you're trying to look at each individual uh, one dimension or plane uh, or a space within a three dimension, a three dimension within a three dimension, then you know, this is getting a little bit long, but <laughs> I'm like, I know where we're going, where you're at. I'm like, I'm going to see you pull this back to Hellraiser somewhere. <laughs> it's coming back. <laughs> uh, hell Hellraiser is actually part of the reason why I have this conception. Uh, really? Enough. Yeah. Um, Elaborate. Okay. So let me just finish on this track and then I'll go there. So if you're looking at, you know, spaces within spaces, whether it's one dimension, two dimension or three dimension, then there's going to be some reflection or some sort of shadow in order to see that because you have to create some barriers or, or some, some uh, boundaries, you know, in order to Ooh. clarify it or define it in any dimension other than uh, a singular. So mm. once you get out of the singularity, then there has to be a casting of light and a casting of shadow in order to see what's there. So, you know, one dimension, two dimensions comes out of one dimension, three dimensions comes out of two dimensions. So you can find the larger dimensions inside the smaller dimensions, right? And everything kind of comes down. So there's a fourth dimensional space that doesn't get talked about mathematically physicists, mathematicians proved it. It's in and out would be the fourth dimension. So you, because you can leave the three dimensional space or come back into the three dimensional space Now you might be going into a different three dimensional space, or you might be going into something else altogether. You might be going into a one dimensional space or a singularity, but you're going in and out. So like on a Cartesian plane, you know, you've got the uh, X, Y axis, and there's a Z axis that would go in and out. And so Buddhists or meditators or psychedelic people or whatever talk about going inwards, you know, or the psychologists will talk about going inwards. So that would be the Z axis, the fourth dimension. And it would be infinitely small and infinitely large. So that would be quantum physics into, you know, material existence. And <laughs> so I'm trying to think of what else I need to finish up. And then I'm going to bring this back to, to help. <laughs> You're doing great. I actually do have a question. Okay. <laughs> Just so I don't lose my thought. I know I'm going to lose and make you forget the other one if I do that to you. Though, so I'm not going to. <laughs> so, <laughs> Go ahead. Um, to you know, to basically transcend your shadow, um, mm -hmm. you've basically got two options. You can either get rid of all shadow, which means you go down to the singularity, you know, so that would be the non-dual. So you, you know, go into a single point and you go inward, which would, which is the easiest way to escape your shadow. Just go inward and just sit with yourself. And that's where like the Buddhists and the meditators and the psychedelic people talk about, there is no self. Like, J. Michael Silver is an illusion. It's something that I've created. You know, Brandon Croucher is an illusion. It's something you've created. And it's, it's just a, a point of reference for us to have an interaction and to create the different vibrations or the different, you know, planes of existence, you know, so that we can have a conversation, right? It's a point of reference. And, the, and right. these identities are just 
give us definition or give the light something to shadow upon so that we can have discussion and a point of reference and we can point over there and talk about stuff, right? So the other way, um, which isn't talked about as much, which would be going to the fourth dimension, basically leaving the leaving your body. So yes. that's where shit gets weird, you know, and that's where you hear about NDs, yep. um, you know, near death experiences, out of body yep. experiences, lucid dreaming, also psychedelics, also meditation, um, lots of research at all the universities. So that would be outside. So that way you can see no shadow and all the shadow all at the same time, because you're, you're both like a singularity and everything all at the same time from an outside perspective, looking down at the box, looking down at all the shadows that you're casting and all the different, you know, angles that you're, you know, whatever. Okay. So Hellraiser for anyone that's not listened to it, or if you've, have you seen the movie? I have seen Hellraiser. Yes. Okay. So it's a puzzle. It's, it's the mythology is all based around this puzzle box and the puzzle box, you know, was imbued with, you know, demonic powers, and it was a, it's a fourth dimensional uh, portal, basically. And when you solve the puzzle box, it opens up into another dimension. So that's the movie. So, you know, when I was, you know, this would have been back in the 90s when the movies came out. Um, I watched those films and I, I, I'm not a horror fan. Um, but in the Hellraiser films, very specifically, I don't know if I've ever had an opportunity to explain this so in such detail. It's, it's so weird because this really is so like uh, formative for me um, as far as how I see things and how I you know talk about things. You know, obviously there's lots of other influences, but so if you can take a box, a three-dimensional space within obviously another three-dimensional space, your you know your reality, and you're able to open that up and it's a portal to another dimension then, you know, that would be, you know, fourth dimensional singularity all coming together where you can kind of just, you know, think and you're there, you know, you travel at the speed of yeah. thought, you know, not the speed of light. And, um, and the beings that come out of there basically force you within the context of the movie to experience great pain to find your true self because they want to uncover your true face. So Pinhead, the main character, you know, he was like a cop and he, you know, he, he gets swallowed up and has to face himself and his true self is like Pinhead. And he's got all these, you know, nails in his head and, you know, the crazy leather and everything. And, you know, his colleagues have like split head in half, you know, they're just these crazy demonic looking wild creatures. Um, and they define that as the true self of these beings. And essentially what they're talking about is pain is an illusion. So, and once you, once you succumb to the pain, the pain becomes joyful. And once you experience the joy of the pain, you can't be hurt anymore. And that's when you find your true face. So, I mean, if you think about it like that, you know, yes, it's a horror film and yes, everyone in it, that's not a, a, a quote unquote demon is trying to escape this and they're trying to shut down the box and they're trying to hide it and they're trying to keep it from people, you know, using it. But from the demons perspective, they have made their peace with the pain of life and existence, physical pain, emotional pain, and they've made their peace with it. And they just accept, you know, I'm, and, and this would go into our modern, like, you know, body image stuff you're as beautiful as you feel. You're as wonderful as you feel. You may see me as a disgusting monster or a fat slob or a this or a that or a whatever. But in reality, I'm this amazing creature that transcends time and space and has the ability to look, you know, whatever way I want. And it's appealing to me because it's my true face. And if you don't like it and you think it's grotesque, that's your problem. But let us show you the light. Let us show you how magnif magnificent you can be. This is all kind of Hellraiser stuff, but it's applicable yeah. to our life. And, you know, from a, so that would be the shadow work, you know, uh, Clyde Barker masterfully basically says, you know, face your fears. 
uh, and Lords of Illusion, <laughs> just to bring it back to that film, uh, Nix, in order to show, you know, Swan or his disciples, um, you know, their truth so that they can embark on the beginning of their path to self-discovery and magic and everything else, he puts his fingers inside a person's head and shows them that all we really are is is muck is um <laughs> such a long rant sorry <laughs> <laughs> you're good i'm understanding and i'm actually I, I so there's parts of it where i'm picturing in my head where this would look really cool as like a doodly explaining yeah. how your brain works and all that like you explaining that was really well like broken down and it's only been a few minutes like for real it wasn't that bad at all i'm picturing it as like a doodly because of the fact that you explain something that is very con very deep that a lot of people don't understand and yeah. they like we said and you broke it down into such a simple thing and it's it's about you it's about yeah. looking inward it's yes. about how we are all a swamp a mud a ocean yeah. but it's dark when you yeah. go down there and, and like, it's, you have to look inward and go ahead to the movie <laughs> and Nick. So, yeah. And Nick's being, you know, in not the goddess, you know, maybe it was whitewashed. I don't remember the story. So maybe Nix was a woman in the book. Um, you know, Clive Barker, if, if I have my facts straight is a gay man, you know, he's like 60 or 70 now. So he grew up in a time where it was not okay to be gay. He's English. So they're, uh, doubly repressed because of that and so his writing is all about trying to set himself free and trying to set other people free so cabal which is the book where the short story of lords of illusion comes from is about a race of beings that has to hide because they're magical and um and cabal is basically the human that dies to become their leader to bring them to salvation and it's all about like true self it's all about your inner beauty it's and like his struggle as a gay man um created such amazing beautiful art like it's almost like well thank god history um forced him to be in the closet so that we could have such amazing beautiful work and now let's change that like it's such a weird thing when you think about like huh. some of the beauty that's come out of that pain but that's exactly what Clive Barker's work is all about like I hate the idea that anyone's oppressed or anyone you know isn't able to be themselves but because of it his work of art has given people a whole nother way of looking at becoming true. yourself, becoming your true self, loving your true self. And, um, you know, all of his movies come down to know thyself or all of his stories on some level. And, you know, that is shadow work, you know, that is, you know, because we create our shadows, you know, mm -hmm. and then, and then we allow them if we are subservient or, or um, you know, inactive, we then allow them to recreate us in Correct. their image. So we create these monsters and then we hide from them or run from them as if they're something other than us. And then we allow them to change us and, and um, twist us because yes. we're not willing to accept that or, you know accept that side of ourselves yes i agree i agree sorry the cat jumped and slid down my desk right then so i was trying not to laugh because it was really funny sorry about that no no it's all uh, right. but so no, I, but I, that, that's my rant i, I don't I, i'm sure i could go on on other tangents but that's that's the that's the multi-dimensional uh creative and spiritual way of combining things so that it's a little less esoteric and it's a little less intangible for people who don't like the woo woo that's a very very good way of saying it i like that i love it so talk to me my friend now wait there was another thing wait, that did we you have a question another... i did but we lost it a long time ago I'm sorry. um 
I, <laughs> okay. That was the one I asked before and you were like, oh, I'll get to that after. I was going to bring that back up. Um, what was it? I don't know. Maybe it's just gone forever. It, it's in the come universe. Back. If it comes back, it comes back. Yeah. It'll come back. Um, but so you're, you're, you have a psychologist that you work with or talk to that deals with shadow work. I do. Yeah. So I, I actually have a hypnotherapist that I work with. Um, I meet with her once a week, every Saturday. Um, it's my time to be able to connect with business Brandon to baby Brandon to yeah. work on all different sides of me while looking in. Um, and I just, I, I want to like, just give credit to this because it took me having to look in on me and it yeah. wasn't like my therapist did anything crazy different. She opened up doors that made me sit down and look inside. Yep. And the more I looked inside and worked and actually took it seriously, the better I was getting compared to 38 years. I'm 39 this year, but like 38 years of focusing on the medicines that the doctors were giving me right. and wanting to get better and wanting to get better. And it's not saying don't take your meds. I'm not saying yeah. that they help, but like, I am saying that when I take the time to look inward, it made a really big difference for me, my businesses and work on me and to see the change in a year, it's worth taking the time to meet with a hypnotherapist to a Reiki for some people is a good first start. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like start with, with where you're comfortable and be willing to connect. And if you're not going to be willing to connect, you're going to find you didn't. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you know? absolutely. How did you figure out that's what you needed? Like, because it's that's funny. Great question. Uh, I act, go ahead, finish your question. You said because, well, because you you were going to doctors, it's you, it sounds like you were on medication, so you were medicated. Um, how long did that last? And then, and how did you then go, well, maybe all this can go away, or maybe this can get better? You know, because some people, you know, some people need the meds. Some people absolutely need the meds. 100%. That's where they're at. And maybe that's where they're always at. Um, and then, but some people can get off the meds. And mm -hmm. my knowledge or my experience is usually they get off the meds because of looking in and because of actually doing internal work. So, so I want to be honest, it didn't start with the internal work. Um, I went through a really nasty divorce years ago, 10 years ago. And during that divorce, I, doctors had me on 15 pills a day for anxiety, depression, all these different things. Wow. That and just sounds tough to keep up with. I, I, I it, it, when you're depressed already, it's hard to keep your body moving. And I was 29 years old. Like I, I was inside. I was so tired. I was going to bed at 10 o'clock at night and waking up four o'clock in the afternoon some days. Oh, wow. Right. And the doctors are like, well, you're depressed. You know, you're going through a divorce and you and her had a really bad falling out. And it was like, I woke up one day and it hit me like a ton of bricks. I just felt there's other things I could do. I couldn't hold down a job. I had two master's degrees. I knew I wasn't lazy and I'm like, what is wrong with me? And so I started to look inward but it wasn't the way I wanted. It was, I dumped all the pills and I was delivering food for a Chinese restaurant. And the guy, one of the regulars that came in all the time taught me about cooking and healthy eating. Mm -hmm. And I started with the healthy eating. Um, long story short is we went from healthy eating to opening a restaurant with the guy that owned the Chinese restaurant, the three That's of awesome. us. And then that took off. Uh, I did something right there because I got a job at Starbucks. Like for real, mm -hmm. my cafe competed versus Starbucks across the street, just like they want, you know, like Starbucks yep. wants. Yep. I hurt their cat. I hurt their business so bad. I had the other two Starbucks down the road in downtown Cleveland. Like what the, so the district manager shows up inside my restaurant and it's like, I want to offer you a job. And they offered me a job and I ended up running the third largest Starbucks in the world. 
Wow. Now at this point I'm off meds. I'm focused on healthy eating. I've started exercising. I started, I moved out of downtown uh-huh. and it, I'm joining the Starbucks team to owning your own business is tough, but like insurance, paying your staff, there's a lot of overhead. And if oh, yeah. you're not balancing it and you don't have the right partners, it's just another shadow that you're going to have later in life that you're yeah. going to have to learn to shed light on. And for me, that was a life lesson. And I got to Starbucks and I was so excited for the insurance. I ended up running the Cleveland Clinic Starbucks. And one day it hit me, the 15 pills. Like it was like, I used to be on this many pills a day. And I'm now running a Starbucks that is all caffeine and sugar Mm -hmm. in one of the world's largest hospitals and one of the biggest corporations. Mm -hmm. And I did it in under three months. So I'm like, I'm pretty good at this. But every day when I left, I'd go outside and I got to my car and I would smoke because my coping was actually cannabis. Okay. So so cannabis, not cigarettes. Okay. No. Yes. I Trust me. I, I was going to make sure I made that clear. So I would smoke. Yeah. I, I was smoking cannabis, but I was legally getting it as a medical thing. Right. And I knew I needed certain things. I, it was, I had done it enough before I had learned a lot about this plant. And then it hit me one day, how do I get people like my mom and dad to actually want to try something that they're not going to smoke. They're not going to do an oil. Mm-hmm. They're not going to try gummies. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a whole bunch of things that just raises red flags to them from CBD to THC and confusion. Yeah. And with me being on the meds to learning about how to take care of myself through diet, exercise, meditation, and then looking inward, the, hip, the, the therapy came because honestly, I was going to Reiki and it was the morning show and I had a hypnotherapist come on and she it was a little over a year ago now. And she goes, I don't know why, but I feel I'm supposed to talk to you. And it was right at the end of the show. She goes, I'm going to give you two free sessions. And I just thought it was a business thing, right? Yeah. My first two sessions, I'd never, it felt like I had 10 years of therapy in two sessions and I'm That's not amazing. exaggerating. Yeah. So for me, it was those steps needed to be taken care of because we don't realize how important, like if you only eat, you're out in California, if you only eat in and out Burger <laughs> and McDonald's, yeah. you're going to get huge, right? Yeah. It's, you're it's screwed. not insulting the right yeah. every now and then I get it. But like, when you know what you're putting in your body and you start appreciating it from the moment it goes in your mouth to actually being digested, your body returns it in grateful because you brought it in. Yeah. And for me, I didn't realize how much food played a role until I started these restaurant things. And then, yeah. So I mean, it's all that. (laughs) What you put into your body and mind, you know, also is massively important to how it shapes you. Uh, mentally and physically. Yes. So if all you're putting in is horrible negative things and and sugary fatty foods and all kinds of processed crap, then that's what's coming out, you know, and that's Correct. what you're going to reflect. Um, yes. I think you froze on me. I was just about to say, I think you froze on me. Oh, oh there fine. we go. We're back. Um, <laughs> it only lasts <laughs> a second. Um, so I'm curious because, you know, one of the things that, that I want to dive in, in general with people is like, you know, that's a great story. And that makes a lot of sense to me, but I feel like there's that, how many years is that? <laughs> uh, I gave from, you from, from Chinese, 10 years. Just, that's 10 years. So that's I mean, 10 years with the divorce at the beginning. Yeah. In a matter of a couple minutes. So there's no possible way we got everything. You know what I mean? And <laughs> not even close. Sounds like... like, okay. And so this is, so when I was in my early twenties, I was teaching meditation and I primarily tried to teach a foundation of meditation and the basics of meditation long before I ever had the concept of foundational steps. Um, I was, my mind was always thinking like, what's the simplest, easiest barrier of entry? Because that's the hardest thing for people. Right. So you said meditation came in, but it sounded like it didn't come in until later. Is that accurate? 
hundred percent. Uh, I was actually a youth pastor before the divorce. Um, so for me, cannabis at first Mm -hmm. was a no and it was just and it wasn't the no that it was like i smoked the day before i got married but my ex did not like that plant and she had this very negative thing towards it right so when i finally was finally when i was became single again and was able to have this opportunity i i didn't know what i was diving into yeah it was one of those things where it's like it is associated with partying because it is that too. But that's why there's people that have, you want to get the stuff that's grown in a, a, a basement. That's fine. That's affordable. But if you want to actually get stuff, that's a medicine, you don't go to Walgreens to go get the coronavirus vaccine. Actually you do nowadays. Never yeah, mind. <laughs> Never mind that. But like, you know what I'm saying? Like you don't go for the big stuff. You need to go to get the actual stuff that you need with the people that are growing it in labs that are like, and I don't mean that as in like lab labs. I mean like growing it in natural places with, you can see what's going on where there, you know what you're putting in your body. There's care and there's, there's intention behind the growth. I don't, yes. I don't disagree with that, but I, but I would say, you know, I'm a fan of Hamilton's pharmacopoeia. Um, I don't know if okay. you've ever seen, um, seen that show um, came out of vice news years back when vice was still actually a news organization. And um, I mean, I don't know whatever they're doing, they're doing, but I, you know, it, it used to, I feel like they used to do actual real exposés instead of narratives. Um, and essentially what he he would say is there's no bad drugs there's there's molecules that can be used as recreational and they can be used for medicinal purposes and you know i've heard that from other people and i guess my take on it is it all comes down to the personal intention because if you use any and i don't care where it comes from the quality of the molecule or the medicine or the drug or the whatever absolutely in question you know if you're getting it from some dude's basement or if you're getting it from uh some person that is really taking the time and intention to understand what cannabinoids and what combinations and you know what it's going to do for you or do to you um or help you do correct that's quality so but there's some labs that are going to create oxycontin at a very high pure level and there's other people that are creating oxycontin that's cut with god knows what and it's going to kill you real fast um yes. my, a very close friend of mine his brother actually died of uh opiate complications i believe he was clean when he passed um or trying to be clean but it was complications because of his addiction and the stuff that he was getting on the streets had a completely different impact on the body so like the withdrawal symptoms and um the the just trauma to his body was twice as fast it ravaged him much quicker than the hydrocodone that he would get from a prescription um yeah so there's difference in quality but my perspective and i think this is your it sounds like your perspective too it's intention of use uh, yes. along with quality. So if you take something in at a party and you don't want to deal with anything you're getting from it, <laughs> you're not going to do your shadow work. You're not going to do your introspective. You're not going to, you know, receive the benefits, then it's just a party drug. And then if yep. you like MDMA is known as a party drug, but but MAPS has made it very clear that in a clinical setting with intention, you can overcome your PTSD in a matter of like three sessions or less for yes. military combat PTSD vets. So set and setting. Um, 100% but, agree. Yeah. Um, and the only reason why I want to nitpick on that is because I know you're an advocate of of using things medicinally as I'm, as am I, and I have no idea. I just, I hate to propagate 
you know, anyone that's, if the best they can do is get something out of the basement, you know, some dude that doesn't know what strain they're growing, like I would rather have them do that and get help versus turn to alcohol and self-destruct. Yes. I actually agree with that because alcohol really does influence in different ways. We are talking about how our bodies are like a uh, 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 ocean and stuff like that. I mentioned, mm-hmm. think about all of a sudden taking the ocean and having an oil spill in it. That's what alcohol yeah. does to us. Yeah. And I'm not saying don't have fun and don't have a drink now yeah. and then. I, and I there is a medicinal quality to alcohol as well. It's just, not used for that because that's not our culture. That's not our practice. And I, I don't personally know many people um, that have any clue how to use alcohol medicinally. And, Correct. and the, the, the most, I, common, I yeah, I mean, the most common thing that people would say is, is an antiseptic, antiseptic, you know, to clean out a wound or something. That's probably the most common way someone would say use alcohol medicinally. Um, but there, I don't want to get into it, but there are other ways of using it. <laughs> yes. Yes. So I, but I, I agree with you. <laughs> okay. So uh, I, I want to, I, I kind of want to get back to the meditation thing because there's an, there's something okay. there that I'm curious how, how much you've thought about, but you were talking about, you know, when you were married, marijuana uh, or cannabis was uh, not acceptable. So when you got divorced, you were able to then go back to it and find some solace in it and and get some relief from the depression. Is that what you were telling me? In a sense, yes. It was like you said, if you're getting basement weed, you're getting basement weed. And when I first got right, like and it's not insulting. It's if you if that's what you get, you get I get it because that's where I started and I didn't know what to get. I didn't know the difference and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's what's the difference between Tylenol and Advil? You know what I mean? Like you you don't really know it on those things. And for me, it was such a new thing. I just wanted to try it for the party in a sense. And once I noticed different things from the first time I started smoking, I needed it for sleep. Mm -hmm. So then all of a sudden there was other strains that gave me energy when I went to Vegas and I bought stuff and came back to Ohio Mm -hmm that we didn't have here that had stativa. And I'm like, wait, what is this? And I have to do research. Yep. It was a whole new world. And then when you start opening up into over COVID, I said, I did a digital retreat with uh, meditation and yoga and all this, all these things. That's and awesome. it was for mother's day huh. and I did it with my mom. Huh. And if I paid for her, I got to go for like a certain number of days for free but if I'm a sponsor and the energy that I bring of being always laughing, they were wanting me there. And it was really interesting because we talked about this mm-hmm. and then we talked about drugs such as psilocybin from mushrooms mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. peyote from the cacti. And we were getting into that. And my mom who has never expressed questions on those mm-hmm. all of a sudden opens her eyes and is like, well, and I left the room because I'm her son. Yeah. She doesn't, and want to have that with somebody like that there sure and everybody said to me like afterwards they're like your mom was like so into wanting to try stuff she was so curious that's like awesome so i it's being able to find a proper like connection to talk to yeah uh, as well uh, because i think that helps break barriers down compared to everybody being like oh i got the flyest stuff to yeah. like oh i don't I, i'm gonna give you the best deal like don't talk to someone you trust yep. that is going to be honest with you because everybody can be a drug dealer if they want. Oh yeah. I mean, and if, if recreational is what you need, because sometimes you just need to take a break from reality. If you, if you've got your relationships handled, you know, whether it's immediate family, extended family, your, your friendships and your business and everything's on point, like, why shouldn't you be allowed to take a vacation, you know, mental, emotional, physical, you know, whatever, go someplace mental or physical. Like, I mean, why shouldn't that be allowed? Um, I agree. Let's, let's uh, rewind just a little bit. I, there's meditation. Yeah. I want to go back into this meditation. So as a pastor, you, as a youth pastor, you were very well versed in prayer. Yes. Yes. So yes. is 
was prayer a form of meditation for you or did you ever see it at that time? No, very honest. No, not at all. I, I, prayer was your, so where you're going, I see, uh, my prayer time was my, was praying to God, Uh but in that moment, in that time of my life, that was me praying to a a higher being. Mm -hmm. It was a white dude with a gray beard in the in the sky, in the Uh, clouds. Were you abdicating your, your power by doing that? mm, I was, it was, it was, I was, I remember a kid saying to me, a very young kid, like Mm -hmm. third grader, when he closes his eyes and he looks to his heart, he sees the color blue. Is that God? Mm. And in my eyes, he's looking inward and that's how he sees God. Mm-hmm. But in the church's eyes, because I didn't say, no, that's not Jesus. They didn't really like that. Mm. And that was my first thing that really raised my attention to, well, what is God? And made me really want to know more. I have a theology degree and I'm sitting here going, what is God? No, it means I know what the Bible tells me God is, but there's so many other religions I was curious about from Buddhism to meditation. all that. So my prayer at that time, that's why I said what I did about like the white guy in the clouds is because it's the metaphorical, what we picture is it growing up. Once I started through the divorce and the eating and seeing how connected I am to this earth, that going inward meant a lot more. It meant that prayer was actually praying to a higher power that's inward. And it's Mm -hmm. one that I can talk to. And that was what needed to separate from me is I didn't just pray to say, thank you for the food and bless this. It's wow. Thank you. Well, just to tie that back to our earlier conversation, um, fourth dimensional space, the in and out, the Z axis, uh, or the X, Y, Z, Q, I don't know, whatever that the in and out access, <laughs> whatever letter you're teaching me the access ones. I don't know the access lines. <laughs> so X, Y is a plane and then Z is three dimensions. And then the, uh, and then the fourth dimension, I don't know, whatever Q for quantum, quantum physics. Yeah. We'll go for quantum and quantum is, is just a particle. It's just a, an amount of something. So a quanta is any amount of something in, in quantum physics, it's a very small amount of something. Um, so what I, just to connect that, what you were saying, when you were praying going inward, that would be the in and out because the easiest way to leave your body is to go in because once you go in and you get to that singularity, then you can really go anywhere. Um, I know that sounds so esoteric. Like people, people might be listening. What is he talking about leaving his body? That's weird. No way. That doesn't matter. (laughs) But you know, you, all right. So when you have a dream, Mm -hmm. okay, let's just do this. and have some fun with this one. When you have a dream and you're about to, something great's about to happen, Mm -hmm. but you don't realize you're in a dream yet. And you're wondering, is this real or fake in a dream? If you want to know, do yourself a favor and say, let's fly and try to fly Absolutely, and really put yourself out there to fly. And I don't mean jump off a building, but jump off a building because if you're really going to happen, you're going to fly and you're going to wake up before you jump. You're going to, it's different. You're yeah, the fan the anxiety. is not going to be you. <laughs> yeah. The, I mean, yeah, that's I, the biggest difference, you know, in a, um, the non-physical is the, anything that's physical, you have this body and there's lots of chemicals and chemical reactions. The difference between, um, so your brain doesn't know the difference between a, a dream and reality. So, which is right. why you wake up when you're falling in a dream because your body goes, oh my God, oh my God. And all the endorphins and all the adrenaline and everything else starts, you know, flooding your system and you can't take it. And you kind of break out of that paralysis, that sleep paralysis, and then you're awake. And if you can get that under control, then that's when, you know, lucid dreaming is possible. So you basically can control your 
uh, endorphins and your autonomic system so that when you're falling, you, you can go, oh my God, this is amazing without actually waking up. Um, but the, um, I don't know. I, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I was staying quiet enough to throw you off. <laughs> You're good. So, so when you were when you were praying at a point, at what point in time did it become more of an inward journey and an outward journey, and did it start becoming a little bit more of uh, of a, a I don't know a real experience or you know experience Ooh, that's a good that question. you know because. It, I, it, if you're praying to a white man in a, with a beard in the clouds, how real was that for you versus where you're at now? And, and oh, where was wow. The Honestly, great question because I've never, I've never phrased it in that phrasing that I can remember in any interview. It's just always a youth pastor and people just kind of go with it. Yeah. Like, they're like what? Especially when they hear I'm in the cannabis industry. <laughs> um, my big thing is, I had so many questions mm -hmm. and I might've had a degree and knew the answers that were there, but there was so much more inside that drove me mm -hmm. and made me want to know more where today, when I go inward, it's a completely different thing. Like I, I'm, I'm, when I say I'm grateful for something and I can tell inside, I really felt the difference. Yeah. It's, it's, I'll be very raw. I'll be very raw. So it was about a year and a half ago, I started going to Reiki. And mm -hmm. in Reiki, I had a day, I just felt the universe had a boulder on my shoulders. Mm. And I could not figure out why. And it just felt like there was something I needed to let go of. And I didn't know. So I go to my Reiki girl and I go, she's getting ready to do cards and stuff like that. And she's like, so what do you want to ask the universe? I'm like, what is this boulder on me? She does this reading that was just like my past I'm holding on to all these different things. And I'm mm -hmm. like, okay. And then she goes and she does her hands around me. And this was the first experience I had where I was completely let go and told the universe I'm yours. Help me let go of whatever this is. I'm tired of whatever's holding me on this. She got to a lower part of my rib and goes, ow, who kicked you? And I'm like, what? And Awfully specific. It, right? Like completely blows my mind. Yeah. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, so I'm like, what do you mean who kicked me? And she's like, I can tell this is a wound. And the only word that's coming to me is kick. And I thought that was really interesting because in my divorce, I walked in on my ex-wife having an affair That's and fine. she set me up to go because we had foster kids. I had to go feed the kids the next day after I walked in. I wanted to make sure the kids were safe and all that. I go back to the house and she ended up telling the police that I did stuff to her that I didn't. And I had to prove my name and prove like where I was and what was going yeah. on and all these things. Long story short is when police came in, I got arrested on the spot because of what she was saying. And right. it took over four years of court hearings and divorces, and all this stuff to clear a felony off my name. But one of the police officers kicked me in the rib and she was claiming that I kicked her. There was no pictures, there was no evidence, there's no bruise, but she's telling them I did. And then the what police are pissed. Yeah. And it was the interesting thing. Sorry. That weekend was the exact same <clears throat> weekend, 10 years earlier, that I literally was dealing with that from my ex-wife. Wow. And that was when I felt like this big weight come off and I said, okay, the universe really does want me to see we are all connected. Like I didn't even remember that day was happening. I didn't remember why. And then all of a sudden she's saying this and I felt that flood of memories come back Yeah. and I'm in her office, her studio, and I open up my phone and I'm looking at the date and I remembered the date clear as day. And I looked at it, it was like, holy cow. And it's like, this was 10 years ago. I was in jail at this moment 
Like I got arrested at this time. And she was like, wow. And it was, I, I, I that's when I knew I really am connected because she had yeah. no idea about this. She knew the divorce. She knew of some of the story, but like I never and in, ingrained that yeah. much detail. And then <laughs> so as specific. time went on. Oh yeah. And then as time went on, she did other things that wowed me like red story. I'll give you another one really quick. Just to show you is her and I were both, our energies were in sync one day and we were both sitting there and she's like, this is going on. I'm like, this is going on with me. And we're going back and forth. She does a reading and it like, it was so directed at me and knowing that I have to know who I am and keep working on me. And she's like, I've never felt like this was a reading I've had before. I need you to know this. And mm. she's like, just hear, like, see this. And she goes, now here's the thing. I need you to go home and watch the Leo King. Okay. The, the Leo it's, King? He's a psychic on YouTube. Oh, okay. And he does, he, I didn't know who he was either. She had to send me a link because I was so confused. She calls me to make sure I'm going to watch it. And she's crying. And I'm like, what the heck? So she's like, turn it on now. So we video chat and through the video chat, there's nothing she could have done. This is a guy who has 10 million followers or subscribers mm -hmm. on YouTube. And he's doing a live reading earlier that day. That was a couple hours ago. Mm -hmm. At the same time I'm with her. And that's when he released this live feed. Okay. In that moment, he pulls out a deck of cards that a fan sent him. And he goes, I don't know why, but I'm supposed to read this for a Taurus. I'm a Taurus. Okay. And he flips open the card, shuffles them, and he's talking. And he starts flipping cards. Every single card he flipped was the same card she flipped. Card for card? Every single one. That's card for statistically card, impossible. impossible. That, that's like, a, a, that would be a trillion to one to odds. One. Yeah. Or more. Her, How her many and I sat there? there. Ten. Yeah, I mean, statistically, that's just not mathematically possible. It's, it doesn't make sense, right? Yeah. We took pictures. I always take a picture of yeah. my of the final like, of my cards reading. or whatever. Yeah. yeah, and she and I are going through it because she's like, send me the picture. And I'm like, okay. So we said, her and I are going through it. And she's like, I, you told me you wanted to connect to the universe and you want to be something to bring change. She's like, Brandon, I've never seen anything like this. And so like her and I are just like in awe. Like our jaws That's dropped. Epic. And then the next day is when I interviewed the girl on uh, that, my hypnosis therapist. Oh. And she all of a sudden comes in and she's like, I can see you're on a journey. I'm supposed to offer you this. And as I've gotten to know her for a year now, I'll tell you what, if I don't show up taking it seriously mm -hmm. and taking it's, it's me not showing up for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And <laughs> she doesn't just, I, I was blown away that she did this free session, for, like these free sessions. And now I'm finding out years later, she really doesn't give these away. And she did it because she felt the universe tell her this is supposed to be what he's supposed to do. Yeah. So for me, the universe, this, the third, the fourth dimension, all these connections, I believe in it too, because of the fact that I've been living in a state of, I, I'm, I'm free falling now compared to having it where a parachute was provided of yeah. information to, and now I'm actually trusting the universe. So sorry, that was long winded. No, 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 no that was amazing. <laughs> that was, that was such, that was epic. That was just a, a fantastic story. And, and um, I mean, statistically, it's just not possible for you to do a reading on that day for you to take a picture of it. And then she's like, Oh, you've got to watch this guy. And he just randomly says, this is for a Taurus out there. Boom, boom, boom. I'm positive other people got benefit from that reading. They're tourists. They think it's for them. Correct. No one, it's, Has, no one could it, have had the same reading on the same day. And correct. It's just not statistically possible. Um, you know, I asked the universe a big I'm question help out of it, but if, especially oh, hell if yeah. the followers, but that's epic. And so what that tells me, though, is that you got definitive proof for yourself that we're all connected, that there's more to life than this physical existence, that everything you've experienced is, is a lesson to teach you, to help you grow. Like, you got that. Anyone listening to this, they may go, well, I'm a little more curious, 
or they may say, I've had that experience too. Uh, or they may be like, nah, they're, they're making up shit. So like <laughs> how my, to prove it. Yeah. My point is, is like, until you have that moment for yourself, yes, you can believe, but you don't know. Mm-hmm. And until you know, you just don't know. Like, like, and and there, like, I, I mean, it sounds so weird and sounds so like you know, woo woo to you know, weird, just uh, philosophical. Like, but you can't know until you know. You can believe all you want. What is what is the Bible? What is the Quran? What do they yeah. say about faith? Yeah. They tell you faith is not seen. Faith is worked. Yeah. And that means I had to go inward and work that the universe would be willing to talk like that. Like you yeah. said, statistically, it doesn't add up to sit there. Like when I say the reaction was like, it, it was more than winning the lottery. Yeah. And I mean, that as in like, I literally sat there and her and I, our mouths were open and I was living with my parents for this time. And I'm trying to rebuild my business. And that was the questions that I was asking. Within a month of that, my company won, my CBD company won two international healthcare awards. Wow, that's amazing. I'm, I'm speaking in these places. I have a TED talk this year. Nice. Like, I mean, Congrats. like, there's, <laughs> thank you. There's so many things that go into it. And like you said, you've taken life lessons. My biggest challenge was I needed to, The biggest challenge for most people is knowing who you are and then believing in yourself. And the truth is I'm such a people pleaser that I would jump through hoops for so many other people. And the minute I was far enough away from everybody who could want something and I was on my own, kind of like you read about these people going to a cabin in the woods, Mm -hmm. same type of thing, but with a house that I own and I'm sitting here going, it's far enough out the people that are going to be a part of my life will want to come see my house and be happy for me. It Mm -hmm. was something I did for me. And Mm -hmm. that separated me from so much negativity that I didn't see as negative, that it started opening up doors and windows and opportunities that the universe, when they, when God said, be patient, love is patient. It really is because the patience is taking that time to go through the muck. Yep. To see what you really, are. and you've got to go through what you've got to go through to like, to, there's to some extent. And I, you know, I'm not, uh, I, I wasn't an enlightened being, you know, sitting in a cave. So I don't know what that existence is like, but my, my feeling is, is that for people like us who live lives and live quote unquote normal lives, you know, we go, we make money, we go to school, we have friends, we have lovers, you know, for that existence, for that experience, you have to, you know, be able to see all sides of yourself and to really have full actualization. And the way we've chosen in our lives, let's say, let's say we're beings that are having physical experiences to be able to experience your full self in a, in a physical, in a physical sense, then you have to go through so much to illuminate all of the planes, the, you know, the, the one dimensions, the the planes of two dimensions and the three dimensional planes to be able to see every side of yourself, all of that, all those shadows and all of those angles and so forth have to have shadows in the three dimensions in this three-dimensional reality to be able to see it, experience it and and so forth. Maybe on a different plane of existence, we can experience this without all of the muck and without of the density and the weight of the, the, the crap that we bear. But in this existence, you know, there's no way around that muck and, you know, for me, it's all about, like, I just want people to say, you'll know it when you know it, until you know it, keep going. And mm-hmm. you don't even have to believe, you just have to keep going, which is really what the Foundational Steps is all about. Because whether you're a coffee you know, business, whether you want to start a, your own business teaching piano, or um, you want to become a financial advisor, there are steps to get there. 
And there are steps to happiness. There are steps to anything and everything you want to achieve. And all you have to do is figure out what those steps are, get the help to see them, listen to someone else's experience. So you can say, oh shit, that was like me. I need to go and do that. I need to explore this. I need to be more open to that. And you will find steps that you never knew existed waiting for you to take. And Mm -hmm. like, that's what this is all about for me. And um, yeah, I mean, I I think we have a little bit more time left. So like, I want to, I want to, I want to get back to the Chinese food, delivering the Chinese food and li- <laughs> wow. Of all the things to ask me, I have foster I kids to go with. I know. You go there's, to the Chinese food. There's a lot of things there. I mean, and, and we could probably talk for several more hours or, or 10 more episodes. Um, but th- the reason why is because to me, I heard a really fa- um, a profound thing happened you were delivering food and someone said let me teach you how to cook and let me teach you how to eat and that to me is so basic and so i mean that's the foundation of of this existence you like i don't care you don't want to talk about esoteric you don't want to talk about religion spirituality or woo woo stuff great but you got to eat right like you've got this body you've got to eat and to me, that's spiritual. To other people who are foodies and cooks and chefs, it's also spiritual. Gordon Ramsay, I bet if you cornered him, it would be a spiritual thing for him. So, oh, yeah. What if you that? cornered him, though, watch out. He would be the guy I think would knock you out, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe not corner him. Maybe <laughs> get him. Email next him. Week. Yeah, email him. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Um, so, because okay so that experience to me like just screams like like you said you've got tons of other stuff to go to but there's there's something about that moment for me that screams transformational uh foundational and profound so yeah what was that experience how did the how did he how did he or was it he or she it was a he it was a he so how did he and you decide that you needed to learn how to cook and he was going to be the one that te- taught you. So him and the guy that owned the Chinese restaurant were mm-hmm. already golf buddies. Okay. And he was a chef for a different restaurant and he didn't like the menu at the restaurant he was at. And he wasn't like the owner had a menu and he was brought in type of thing. Right, right. So he really wanted to, uh, the name of our restaurant was Fuel, P-H-U-E-L. Okay. Now the name we came up with, because while he was teaching me how to cook, because he would go into these China, this Chinese restaurant and just eat vegetables with this guy all day. And like the two of them, the owner and his buddy would just enjoy talking about food. And Ivan liked to talk business. Andrew liked to talk about the food. And then Mm -hmm. Andrew saw me doing the delivering. I was 20 eight years old at the time I weighed 265 pounds and my stomach was touching the cutting board no matter how far I stood back it seemed like and um he just said do you want me to teach you how to hold the knife and that was the first thing he said and I just thought that was interesting like I was like you know and it started a conversation and then it led to him coming to the back of the kitchen and then cooking and him and I talking and the universe aligned because it gave us a place to create a restaurant Mm. that was going to be a very touristy area that was up and coming right before it was going to blow up. But was he teaching you to cook? Like, had you already decided that you were going to create a restaurant together? No, it was him coming to the back and just having fun. He and the other guy were talking about doing one and then him teaching me about the health food with the alignment of this random building opening up. Mm -hmm. that we just kind of looked at each other and said that actually could work out it's perfect location for it and everything and we opened up a breakfast point and i then within six months 
I had to learn how to cook. I had to learn how meats were doing stuff. I didn't even know really restaurant storage at that time. Mm. Like why you don't put the chicken above the eggs. You know what I mean? Like a whole bunch of little things I didn't yeah. think of because you're just, you know, moving. Yeah, yeah. And he taught me these things because I was curious about why food would do so much. And he could see that I didn't want to be on the medicines I was. Mm -hmm. I can, he saw a difference and he was the first person to actually say, what about food? What about something else? Yeah. And that was why he came to the back was he believed so much in getting the right food into you that you would get the right pH balance or yep. fuel mm -hmm. and be able to keep your body going in the right directions. And honestly, he aligned me with that first initial grounding of what food needs to be uh, to this day. Uh, the, actually funny, I'm going to be cutting a hole in this wall right next to me because my kitchen's right on the other side. Oh, nice. So that way I can actually juice. I can yeah. actually blend. I can do a whole bunch of things and I still cook today, but I want to be able to show people why certain foods are still good using the digital stuff that I do. So for me, cooking is that foundation because we all love to eat no matter what ethnicity you are no matter where you're from there's food is like part of the culture yeah yeah, yeah. and you got to find that start for yourself oh, absolutely for me, he just was that first teacher that saw i wouldn't even say he saw something different he literally saw somebody who wanted something else and knew food was where he needed to start you know all right so i <laughs> i know it's so strange but i want to dig into that a little bit further so Talk you guys start uh, cooking. Uh, he start. He I mean, it starts with just showing you how to hold the knife. And I've literally seen videos on YouTube about how how you hold a knife, how you hold a cleaver, how you hold a paring knife. There is an art to it. Yeah, sushi, su sushi, sushi, sushi chef. <laughs> oh, whatever. What, what are you trying to say there, huh? What, what is that, what? Michael? <laughs> Guys. <laughs> Perfect. With I the, understand. With the pointy things and the sharp edge. <laughs> <laughs> and they roll them really tight. Yeah, they roll around. <laughs> Those guys, they have a technique um, with a knife that is unique unto them. And, and to properly do that type of food, you have to know how to hold the knife, know how to work the knife, and know how to cut the fish in a way that brings about certain flavors and textures. So the art to me is obvious. I don't think it's obvious to everyone. Is that part of what you guys, you know, went through, not necessarily consciously, but I mean, inadvertently, was that some of what you were getting? Yes. And it wasn't intentional at first. Yeah. At first it was teaching me like, oh, you can eat this and it will taste good because of this. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like that's why people put so much butter on certain things. And it's like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, it's like those that's little good. things you just, you know, I, oh, I didn't know I couldn't eat the whole bottle of syrup. Um, but as time went on and I was cooking more and more, I wanted to know more. Mm -hmm. And that's where it really was like, I never thought about how blueberries really affect your brain. I never thought about how almonds are such a good snack for your body, yet, like, we, we don't, M&Ms are right there, and almonds are right there. How many of us choose the M&Ms? Right. And for me, it was so, I saw in that moment, so like, when I start was cooking more and more, I'm using a flat top grill and oven, we're making um, omelets, we're making vegan gluten-free pancakes mm. like for real like and we're in cleveland ohio meat and potatoes type of place you mm -hmm. know like that's where everybody's used to being i don't know what it was but it was he said to me you're supposed to eat the rainbow every day yeah and i that's... thought that was like the, it was the first time i ever heard it and that was something that really struck me is like oh wow I, I don't think I ever come close to what do I eat that's green? What yeah. do I eat that's purple? What do I eat that's blue? You know Most what I mean? Most people don't. I mean, and Dr. Andrew Weil or Weil, um, he's an American, German last name, W-E-I-L, I believe. He was one of the first, I think he was the first doctor to do clinical research with marijuana back in the 50s or 60s. Mm -hmm. um, and 
he has a restaurant now. I can't think of what their names are. Um, and he's got lots of books out there about eating and, and, um, you know, medicines, medicinal, medicinal cooking. Um, but he, he's a proponent of eating the rainbow and Ayurvedic medicine and Ayurvedic diet practices. Wow. That's your cat purring. Uh, I have both of them in here now. Neeks just came in. Uh, okay. Yeah. She's totally black. Totally um, black. And then for, the tail oh, has wow. the, just a tip. Just a um, tap. Yeah. The, um, the, the Ayurvedic is, is interesting because they're also about eating the rainbow and, and then different colors signify different types of foods. I have a friend, she's a health coach and um, she specializes in getting people over autoimmune diseases because she herself had two autoimmune diseases and cured herself. Oh, she's wow. in total remission now. And so she works with people helping them uh, be healed so that they no longer have uh, any any uh unimmune issues um yeah and food and color of food and types of plants such a major major impact oh so yeah and we don't realize how big of a difference it, it does make i'll be honest i lost 60 pounds six zero just by switching my diet and yep. starting to get off my meds like my therapist hated me because look i don't recommend doing what i did do what i did because it could have repercussions for other people. And I'm lucky that I didn't. But I came home one day when I was eating and I was noticing I was feeling better and we're getting ready to open the restaurant. I felt something in me say, dump the pills. And I dumped all 15 bottles wow. down the toilet. My therapist was really mad at me. And I said, look, I'm going to start with diet. And as I start losing weight, I will exercise. And as I exercise, we're going to keep a close eye on me. And she said, look, I, I don't approve of this, but I'm going to give you my personal cell phone number. So if anything happens and you're really taking a dive, like a nose dive, I need you to call me so yeah. we can look at this. And truth be told, she was right there with me through learning about these things to, I would go in and start teaching her about cannabis, not mm -hmm. like an actual class, but like during mm -hmm. therapy to psilocybin and mm -hmm. what were, I've been doing with that. And I just stayed very honest and she, for 99% of it was a hundred, it was pretty good, but it's great. there's always, there's always that like concern of, well, you know, gateway drugs and what if it gets harder and all that. Mm -hmm. And I understood where she was coming from, but that's why I stayed honest is I am only hurting myself. If I tell her I'm doing something that I'm doing yeah. twice the amount of, you yeah, know, absolutely. I mean, that the transparency, I feel like is probably one of the, the most important things in our personal lives and our professional lives. I wish we had it in our politics. I wish we had it in everything. Um, you know, but transparency, man, if we can have it with ourselves, you know, I, I've always said that money doesn't trickle down. It never has, never will, never been proven to. There's no signs that it ever works, but culture trickles down. Culture absolutely trickles down and it feeds on itself. So if we see people being, you know, horrible and nasty to each other, AKA our parents or politicians, or, you know, are the owners of the business or whatever, they're being nasty to each other, then we're going to be nasty to other people because those are our role models. So it really does set the tone and it, and it, you know, when we are in positions of um, service, then those above us will absolutely affect, you know, how we serve and in what way we serve and whether you're a child or a worker. Um, interestingly enough, the caste system in India, the original design of it was to be circular and the the highest echelon of wealthy, powerful people were supposed to be in service to the Brahmanan, the, the religious people who had nothing um, because they were austere and they were, you know, religious folks. And so in having nothing and renouncing, you know, power and everything else, the wealthy were supposed to be subservient to them uh, to be able to 
you know, espouse the culture of acceptance and giving and kindness and, and all of that, you know, they're supposed to, you know, take that into their powerful positions of land ownership or business or politics. Um, and it broke down when they no longer wanted to take the advice of the Brahmin, um, which is essentially what the Catholic church was trying to set up. They were just doing it in a much more insidious way that, um, yeah, well, we probably shouldn't go there now. <laughs> I was like, I was just about to say, yeah, maybe let's hold that right there because we could go down a really yeah. long path on that one. And if we don't stop that one, that might get your viewers to share you in other ways. <laughs> yeah, there's too much. There's too much history to dig into there. You know, to even say it's insidious, um, there's so much data that has to be mined to be able to just lay claim to that. Um, otherwise it's no more insidious than any other religious movement or, you know, whatever, whatever, you know, people are just trying to find the, find the love, find the joy. And yeah. Um, no disrespect to, to any cop. No, that's why I was like, I was like, oh crap. I know he doesn't mean it in a bad way in any way. I'm like, but you know how, like, I don't want to say people are sensitive, but everybody is, has a little more anxiety since COVID started. Yeah, absolutely. And it's just. I think that we need to take a step back and remember that all of us are going through that together. Yeah. And that way the anxiety isn't just felt. Cause I think that we're all feeling it from yeah. you go get a cup of coffee to you talk on a video chat. You're feeling other people's like anxious. Yeah. You mentioned the vaccine, COVID, the president, anything, politics, it triggers people. Yep. And it's just being cautious to those things nowadays. And all of us, Hey, yeah, and we're it's so, all in here. It's so difficult to unpack, you know, to say, to say vaccine, to say insidious, to say, you know, even just the word religion, you know, it sometimes can take an enormous amount of energy and time to unpack it so that it's clear and there's no misunderstandings. Um, so let's, let's stick on the food for just another second, because go ahead. I want to know, and this is really what I, I think I've been trying to, to get at the whole time did in the beginning uh, of your food exploration and learning how to cook, did it become a meditative process? Yes. Uh, very much so. It, for me, and were you aware of that at the time? Not a chance. Yeah. No. And uh, um, I would learn, I, I could get into a zone with cooking that separated me from the rest of the restaurant Mm -hmm. to be able to cook. And I don't mean that as in like a rush zone. I mean, like I'm putting out quality dishes in a fashion that yeah. the restaurant, th there's over 5,000 restaurants, downtown Cleveland, like in the <sighs> main area. Like That's crazy. You'd be amazed how many there are all around, around like cities and stuff. Well, but like, but and I, you gotta I remember think... that's circumference area. So yeah, that goes sure. out to some of the suburbs and all that too we ranked in the top 100 at TripAdvisor. Like we had that many reviews. That's before. amazing. Right. And for me, like they, they congratulate the city, certain cities like that. Like they were congratulating us. You've done great. It's not the award, but it meant people felt that much love in the food, the yeah. meditation side of the food, the love I was putting in there that they actually felt compelled to go write about it. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, the having someone that cared about enough about another human being to teach them how to cook and teach them about food. And uh, they obviously loved cooking and loved food. So, I mean, that that's really what I've been like ever since you brought up the, the cooking. Mm -hmm. Like, I just kind of knew that was there. But that's something that I feel like everyone in their life has a meditative practice that they probably aren't even aware is a meditation. And they, if they were to understand it as a meditation and use it as a practice of meditation, then it would have more benefits for them. That's, that's my thesis, you know, and I think that's a great thesis. I could give you a good one that I'll blow your mind with. So do you want to know what my favorite meditative state is now? What? So like I do many different things. Like I work so hard 
and puts myself through a lot of anxieties that when it's time to sit down and meditate, I have different avenues from exercise to mm -hmm. diamond dots. I don't know if you've ever seen those. Mm -hmm. uh, think color by numbers, but it is much bigger. So I did a like 50,000 piece diamond dot thing. 50,000? Yeah, like for real. I'll have to send you a video of it. Like yeah. I sat there, I started it before Halloween and I finished it Christmas night. Wow. And I mean, it's not like I worked on it hours at a time and every day. Still, but like it was a thousand of anything. Thing. Yeah. Oh yeah, right? of course. So my whole thing was, it was a Van Gogh, the starry night. And all 38 different diamond dots to match the colors of the Van Gogh. And each one has a point that's so tiny that it's like, like for real, I'll send you a video after this. Yeah, I, no, I'm curious. Um, it's, but that was a meditative state. But the one that I go to that when I really need to break and like be alone is I spin fire and oh. I play with fire. So all for right. me... I, I spin a dragon staff. It's six feet tall. It has four balls of flames on either side. I go into the state where I hear the music and I don't see the audience. Mm -hmm. And from the cooking, learning that meditative state, I've seen other areas that I use from business mm -hmm. to exercise for personal growth to fire spinning and the fire spinning I've been paid to spin in front of people. I get paid I, for a while there. And then COVID came along and that was my side hustle. It was like, I'd get paid to go to private parties and I'd cater them and do the mm -hmm. entertainment. You yes. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Great way to That's make amazing. some extra money. Yeah. Yeah. Spin fire. Everybody that was the wait staff spun fire. So that way it like really brought together in, in, in yeah. Cleveland, Ohio. That's not happening. You know what I mean? It was why I did it. It was so different. And the thing that made it that I see today is those areas that are meant to be that meditative mm -hmm. don't need to be for sale. And right. that was something I had to learn for myself. Like when I spin, I can go spin for four or five hours and I'll just be outside by myself and in this state and it's a dance. Mm -hmm. And I never knew when you're in your element you don't see the outside unless you want to. Yeah. And for me, when I'm in that element, I never see people watching me and I could be in a park spinning and all of a sudden I'll stop and there's like 50 people watching and I'm not exaggerating. I've seen, I've had that happen twice where people were like, it looks like a dance even when mm -hmm. it's not on fire. And when mm -hmm. you're in your element, it feels that it feels so good. So for me learning that, that meditative state now is something I have for me and I don't go get paid to go do. It's that I, I use the reference back to being a youth pastor. This little light of mine is that is my light nice. that gets me back to being grounded and branded. That's amazing. That's really awesome. I, 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 I mean, that's, uh, I mean, that's one of the things that I just want for everyone is to have that, you know, knowledge of what, is going to help set them free, you know? And my mom, uh, and this is part of the reason why I started teaching meditation, you know, 20 plus years ago, um, when I was young, I was in my early twenties, is my mom would um, use ironing as her form of meditation. She would iron underwear, she would iron pillowcases, she would iron anything and everything that went through the wash because it was meditative to her. And she was able to release herself from whatever she was dealing with, from my sister and I, to my dad, to the business that they ran together. Uh, at one point in time, my parents were like a half a million dollars in debt. They had, um, they had a business. My sister was on her way to college. Um, they had never made, I don't think they'd ever made that much money, but they were that far in debt because this was the nineties when, uh, we had that recession in the, uh, in the early nineties, 92, 93. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know, I had no idea, but that was You're what kid. mom. Yeah. Um, my mom was say, kept saying because she had her meditative practice of ironing. And when I realized that, uh, while I was in college, I guess, um, is when I realized, wow, million, million possible, infinite number of meditative practices. 
And if people just understand what meditation is and how, you know, what it feels like when they are in that place where they're in the zone, you know, as it's called mm-hmm. with athletes, uh, or in flow state, which has become popular more recently when yep. they're in that place, the benefits are innumerable. And instead of going to try to learn some woo woo weird shit that they just can't wrap their head around some breathing techniques that they're just not ready for, uh, or, you know, sitting in a silent retreat for 10 days. That's just like, what? I'm not going to talk. No one's going to talk for 10 days. Get out of here. They can, people can find benefit from cooking, from ironing, from, you know, fire dancing from, or spinning fire, um, from vacuuming, from cleaning the kitchen. And like, maybe they do it for a living, you know, maybe they're a janitor, maybe they're a chef, maybe they're whatever, a a fire performer, but are they doing it for themselves still? And that's, Mm -hmm. I think the big disconnect or the big trick is is how do you hold on to that for yourself as a private practice even if you're still like a friend of mine she's an acrobat um at some point or another i'm gonna ask her if she wants to do an episode because she's been through hell and back to do what she loves and she's so good and um it's her freedom but it's also her job and she makes a really good living doing it So like, and I know for, I know that she does it for herself and she does it for a job and there's a difference in, and how she practices. And I, and like, obviously that's the same for you with fire uh, spinning. Yeah, it it really, it does because you have to notice it, what yours is. So Mm -hmm. like that dance, like the dances I do, I, in my head, am just, in this element where I'm comfortable and all I want to do is keep this thing up and it feels just right. And my eyes are closed and it just is, I know where this thing, like for real, I've had it where I drop it off of a shoulder and I'm catching it during a spin. I'm in that much flow. Yeah. And it's one of these things where when you, there's other elements of my life that like when I'm in my flow, my energy, my vibration people say it's just like a light turns on Mm -hmm. and it's really fascinating. Um, My CBD company, we at the healthcare conference, I stood up front and I had to present my company and being a brand new thing in healthcare, there's a million questions that all these doctors, Mm -hmm. these healthcare representatives are asking. My presentation was only supposed to be 30 minutes of the entire week. I was up there and they had so much requests to come back and have, they had more questions that I was answering to their level of expectations of what they want. I got brought back up for an hour long uh, panel discussion that I led like for real, they planned it like very quickly. And then after that, after that panel discussion, I was supposed to speak about digital technology divide in another, in another room. Mm Mm-hmm half of that room that stood that was there for the conference moved into the other room with me and when i got done and i'm off the stages and i'm talking to my i i hated i hate being up on stage as weird as that sounds i just i don't picture everybody in their underwear i picture them picturing me in my underwear don't know why (laughs) (laughs) but like they i just i get off stage i'm talking to my staff i'm like did i do well And they were like, are you serious? And I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, you just took over this conference. And I'm like, I did what? And they're like, there's 1,500 people in this conference room Mm -hmm. right now because 700 of them followed you in. And I didn't even notice. And all I was doing was I need to talk about what I've been training myself to do, why I was brought here. And in that stuff, those areas were so critical for who I am as a person that I was in my element and didn't even see things that would boost an ego going on around me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I'm I'm just, I was grateful for that. So yeah, I think your friend being in her element and knowing what her gifts are is take advantage of who you are 
but keep your you like your mom's ironing yeah 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 you know it's such an amazing thing and i mean yeah i mean like i said i think everyone has their thing and they don't even realize it they don't even recognize that they have a meditative practice because you know people think of meditation they think of you know retreats where they yeah sitting (laughs) Um. mantras yeah all these things and it's like well it can be anything though it really can be anything and it's the goal that that you're after and um and if you're achieving flow, if you're achieving, you know, joy, bliss, if you're able to remove yourself from, you know, the, the stress, um, you know, the baggage that you're carrying, let it down, just let it go for a little bit. Like, yeah, yes. yeah that's everything, you know? Yes. So, I, you know, I know we're getting close to time here. Um is there any other little rabbit holes you want to touch on? And, you know, maybe we can do another episode down the road, but is there anything oh, I'd be to touch happy on? Happy to. Um, I don't know. Like uh, you went through the pastor thing, which was yeah. fun. I, 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 and all that. Um, here, let's hit one really, really easy one. That a lot of people yeah. have a problem with it's a new year. And I was doing some research the other day, just my own, brain going its own direction did you know that 54 percent of the of the world will not actually make a new year's resolution so be it okay Okay. but did you know that the people that do of the people that do 78 percent will fail on the second friday of the new year by the second friday of the new year so for me that is a really big red flag that means more than half of the world's population doesn't want to start something for themselves to make themselves better. They don't mm-hmm. want to set a goal. They don't want to set a desire to of that half 78% of it is now able to still focus on it. How as individuals do you show up to, Oh, go ahead. So 78% are not able to hold themselves no, uh, accountable. Correct. So by the yeah. second Friday of January, which was just yesterday, it, 78% of people that set a New Year's resolution goal have failed their goal on so average. Only 22% of the half are able to actually follow through on any level past the two second weeks. Friday, two weeks. Yeah. And then I'm sure there's a drop off after that. Huge drop off. So like there's statistics all over for like other weeks. Like, but my thing is, when you think about how much that is, it's two weeks of time. We talked about food and how important it is, diet, how important it is, meditation. Think about the fact that not taking that time for when all of us know we're calling it out and we're shooting fireworks off and all that, it it's in the middle of a winter for a lot of people, mm-hmm. and like in the United States and all that. But like, it takes months to grow a plant that's mm-hmm. like a tomato a cucumber that you're going to want to enjoy that you have to put the love into and you're going to have to water and you're going to have to nurture how in less than 14 days does the majority of us actually not follow through to help ourselves. Yeah. We have to nurture the same way. Yeah. I'm not saying we have to go down that path, No, but I wanted to share that little bit of knowledge because it was like, it made me see how us as individuals from you doing your podcast and really getting out there and starting something new to me diving into standing on a stage that I really didn't know what I was going to be getting into. Yeah. It's you have to nurture those things and know that it takes time. Yeah. And I think a lot of us have lost that patience and we see it through articles of our attention spans less than a goldfish nowadays to what I just explained with the two weeks in a new year. And if we're not willing to take that time to invest in ourselves through everything we just talked about, you have to be willing to look inward to yeah. make the best version of you. And that's just how I live my life. And I'm, I, that's why I like how you are putting this podcast together. I was grateful you asked me to be here, buddy. Yeah, no, I appreciate you doing this. I, I, um, I wasn't sure when I was going to invite you. I just figured after we did it, because I was already in my head, like, I'm going to do this podcast, uh, this, this new show idea that I had. Um, and I knew I was going to invite you, but I didn't know when, and part of me felt like, uh, I need to maybe wait until I have some episodes so that he can be like, what are you doing? 
Um, you were fine, buddy. I help a lot of people with their first podcast. I, I literally have been on people who I knew the only audience that was going to show up when they wanted to go live were going to be people that watch my live show. Yeah. And those are the dedicated fans. Yeah. The thing is, you have to start somewhere. Yeah. And I needed people to let me start somewhere. Yeah. So why wouldn't I give that back? You know no, what I, mean? I really appreciate that. I mean, it's it's been, it's such an amazing thing to be able to say, I'm going to do something and then get support. And I've had, I've reached out to so many people and gotten that support. And it's just, it's mind boggling. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, really yeah okay let's do this <laughs> why like you're like wait i can actually you're actually in yeah and, and it, it's amazing because it also i know thank you sorry so yeah it, i know exactly. they're reminding me that, they're reminding me i have therapy in three minutes it's it's my girlfriend's here she, she's right like poking her head and she's like hey i know you're on your call and i'm like yeah she goes three minutes i'm like okay thank you <laughs> the um so yeah. I mean, it also makes it easier, you know, you, to hold, be accountable. It was when you ask other people to be involved and they're involved all of a sudden I've got enough of my calendar. It's like, well, I'm stuck doing this, whether I want to or not now. <laughs> and Isn't it's, that a good thing? Oh, it's so right. Good. Yeah. I love that. It, I um, call it job security, not like a worrisome thing. It's just my job security that that many people want to keep doing it. You know? Yeah. No, it's a good thing. It's a really good thing. Well, look, I, Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, I'm sure we'll talk again. And um, I hope you have a wonderful therapy session and, you know, uh, everything else is going gangbusters for you. Um, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I, and I will uh, yeah. make sure I'll try to put in the show notes. I'll try to put, you know, some of the stuff and uh, so people can find you and your show. And um, I'll send you like some little things that I do, like, like, I have the bio that I have written about me that I, I that I edit now and then to uh, my, I have a thing called Milkshake. It's a free app, Oh, cool! but you develop, you literally click on it and you can put all your social media in there. So when people want to sign up, they just click that and it takes that it's here's their Facebook link. Here's their Instagram. And all they do is click which one they want and it signs them up. Oh, cool. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah that's interesting. Free too. So Milkshake. Milkshake. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Um, all right. I, I, I'll talk to you the next time. Thank you. Don't forget to leave a comment or a review. I'd love to hear your thoughts. New episodes every Tuesday. And for clips from the show, check us out on YouTube. Until next time, don't forget your life story is yours to write and rewrite as many times as you want.